By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in our discussion in relation to the ten blessed companions who are guaranteed Jannah by our Master Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, we are today discussing the life of that great companion who is also from the family of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and who was nurtured by Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the blessing of being nurtured by the best of all creation sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is, is that Ibn Sa'd in his at tabaqatul Kubra mentions that Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib karram Allahu wajhahul kareem never worshipped idols ever. Even before the announcement of Islam during his childhood, he never worshipped anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Ali karram Allahu wajhahul kareem, his mother Sayyida Fatima bint Asad who was a cousin of his father Abu Talib and therefore a cousin of the father of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam Sayyidina Abdullah radiyallahu ta'ala an Sayyida Fatima bint Asad passed away in al Madinatul Munawwara and she was amongst those blessed individuals to migrate to al Madinatul Munawwara Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajhul Kareem is the first amongst the children to accept Islam. There are varying narrations in relation to how old Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala an wa karamallahu wajhul kareem was when he accepted Islam. Some state that he was 10 years old, was other narrations such as 9 and 8 as well. Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Wajhul Kareem and his proximity to Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam can be understood by the simple fact that he Radiallahu Ta'ala An since childhood was blessed to be in the company of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was nurtured, he was, he was disciplined, he was taught how to live his life from a very young age by our master Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to Madinatul Munawwara, he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was accompanied by Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an, as we discussed a few weeks ago. Behind in, in Mecca al Mukarrama, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left Sayyidina Ali there in Mecca al Mukarrama and commanded him to stay there for a few days and to give all the amana, all the trust that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi had as well as all those things that were left with him sallallahu alayhi wasallam, right, for protection, to give them all to the people of Makkah al Mukarrama. And after that, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala an was to leave Makkah al Mukarrama and migrate to Medina al Munawwara. And this is what he radiallahu ta'ala an did. And there's also a famous narration which is mentioned in Seer Alam in Nubala as well by Imam al-Zahabi that when Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa left Makkah al-Mukarrama the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Sayyidina Ali karramallahu wajahu al-Kareem to rest on his blessed firash on his blessed bed. So Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajhul Kareem was re resting upon that and when the Kuffar checked the day, uh, the day later, they found Sayyidina Ali there. But the beauty of the amana and the trust of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi and a beautiful message left for this Ummah is apparent here as well. 
that he is sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is leaving Makkatul Mukarrama because of the oppression and the, the tyranny carried out by the people of Makkatul Mukarrama. But he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not betray their trust. And they knew he would not betray their trust in spite of not accepting him, not believing in him, not announcing belief in him. They still trusted him with their stuff, with their matters, because they knew he is trustworthy. They already knew him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as al-sadiq, the truthful, al-ameen, the trustworthy. And they were still trusting him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with their, with their matters, worldly matters. They recognized his truthfulness. It was just their ignorance that was not ex- allowing them to accept Islam. But he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did not break their trust. And this is something that's really important for believers to understand. The importance of amana. The importance of having trustworthiness. Because amongst the signs of the hypocrite are that إِذَا تُمِنَا khana. That when he is given an amana, he's given a trust, he, he breaks that trust. So a Muslim, a believer, does not have this characteristic. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi is teaching us this. And who did he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pass this amana to? Who did he sallallahu alayhi wa know will fulfill this amana for him further? It was Sayyidina Ali karam Allahu wajhahu al-kareem. Sayyidina Ali karam Allahu wajhahu al-kareem. His bravery, his strength, his proximity in the court of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is understood greatly by the event of Al-Khaybar. It's mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam announced to the people of during the battle of Khaybar Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam announced that tomorrow I will give the flag to such a man who loves Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Love him. The Sahaba Ridwan Lai alayhim ajma'een mentioned that they spent the whole night discussing this. They spent the whole night having discussions in relation to this matter and expressing desire that they be granted this virtue. That Allah, that the person who will be given this flag loves Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sincerely. And even that much of affirmation is a great thing for us. If we are told that you truly love Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But it's not just this, but that Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam love Him. So the day... Later, Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Karim, at this time, his eye was affected. He had an infected eye. And Rasulullah sallallahu said, where is Ali bin Abi Talib? They mentioned that he is suffering with an issue with his eye. And Rasulullah sallallahu commanded that he be brought in front of Rasulullah sallallahu So they brought Sayyidina Ali karam Allahu wajhul kareem before the Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam placed his blessed saliva upon the eyes of Sayyidina Ali karam Allahu wajhul kareem and did dua for him. 
and Sayyidina Ali Karramallahu Ajahul Kareem, his eye became cured. And there was no issue with the eye left. And then he took the flag. Sayyidina Ali Karramallahu Ajahul Kareem mentions that after that, my eye never was never infected again. I never had any issue with my eye after the blessed saliva of Rasulullah blessed my eye. When, the, when Khaybar was conquered, when victory reached the Muslims in, the, in, in Khaybar and Rasulullah had announced that the victory would be at the hands of this blessed individual who is beloved to Allah and his Rasul sallallahu the time came to remove the door, the gate to the great fort of Khaybar. And this gate that 40 men were struggling to carry, 40 men tried to carry and they could not carry it. Sayyidina Ali Karramallahu Jahul Kareem single handedly alone removed this door, removed this gate. This was the power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted to Sayyidina Ali Karramallahu Jahul Kareem. Sayyidina Ali Karramallahu Jahul Kareem, his proximity, and as a family member of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi is established within many ahadith. Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu narrates in Sahih Muslim that the ayah of the Holy Quran came in relation to the challenge to the people of the, the Jews and the Christians and the people of the book. The Nadu'u abna'ana wa abna'akum. So you don't accept what we say? Then bring your children and we'll bring ours. Wanisa'ana wa nisa'akum. You bring your wives and we'll bring our wives. Wa anfusana wa anfusakum. And we'll bring ourselves and you bring yourselves. Thumma nabtahil. And then we will have mubahala. We will have a challenge that we will do dua in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the one who is false be destroyed. فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ Then we will make the curse of Allah come upon the liars. The Ahlul Kitab could not take this. The scholars mentioned to them that you cannot bear this challenge. These are such faces, these are such individuals that if they pray in the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be destroyed. So they did not take up this challenge. But who did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa take? Amongst the abna'ana wa abna'akum, abna'ana, as our children, amongst them was Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ajahul Kareem. As mentioned in the narration of, of Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, that Rasulullah called Sayyidina Ali and Fatima and Hassan and Hussein Ridwan Allah Ajma'in, and the Prophet said, Allahumma ha'ula ahli. Wallah, these are my family members. It's mentioned within the tafsir, within the interpretation of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala announces the purity of the Ahlul Bayt. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الْرِدْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِّرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا And to purify you completely. In the verses preceding that, the blessed wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are mentioned. So the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are automatically with, amongst the Ahlul Bayt. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam placed within his blessed shawl Sayyidina, Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Jahul Kareem, Sayyidina Fatima Radiallahu Anha, Sayyidina Hassan and Hussein Radiallahu Anhuma, and said that, Oh Allah, these are also my family members. These are my Ahlul Bayt. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man kuntu mawlahu, fa aliyum mawlahu. Whoever I am a guardian to, whoever I am a protector of, then Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Jahul Kareem is his mawla, is his protector. And Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab would pray Sayyidina Ali in this way that this is the mawla of the believers. This is the guardian and the protector and the patron of the believers. Rasulullah sallallahu said Ali yum minni wa ana min Ali. This hadith is mentioned in At-Tirmidhi, Nasa'i and Ibn Majah. 
The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that I, Ali is from me and I am from Ali. And not only is it mentioned within these ahadith books, a number of scholars of tarikh have mentioned this narration. So Ali yumminni wa ana min Ali. Ali is from me and I am from Ali. And how great was this proximity? How much was Ali, karamallahu wajhahul kareem, from Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? That an emotional scene is portrayed by Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhuma in a narration mentioned by Imam, Imam al-Tirmidhi. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought about brotherhood between his companions Ridwan alayhi wa ajma'in. So the people of the Ansar, the people who are already residing in Al-Madinatul Munawwara, have welcomed the Muhajireen, have welcomed those who have migrated from Mecca to Al-Mukarramah, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has made them, each of them, a brother to, each, an, uh, each Ansari is a brother to a Muhajir. Sayyidina Ali karam Allah wa jahul kareem came, فَجَاءَ Ali تَدْمَعُ أَيْنَاهُ Sayyidina Ali karam Allah wa jahul kareem came, with his blessed eyes filled with tears. فَقَالَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ He said, O Messenger of Allah, آخَيْتَ بَيْنَ أَصْحَابِكْ You have established brotherhood between your companions. وَلَمْ تُآخِ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ أَحَدْ But you have not made me a brother to any of them, any of anyone. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that your brotherhood is very special. أَنْتَ آخِي فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ O oh Ali, you are my brother in the dunya and the akhirah. And Rasulullah sallallahu said that Nubuwa is finished upon me. After me, there cannot be any prophet. But Ali is like me, to me, like Harun alayhi salam was to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. So, anta akhi fi dunya wal akhirah. The love of Sayyidina Ali karam Allah wajhul kareem. This love is part and parcel of the iman of any believer. It is part and parcel of the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. But Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is between ifrat and tafreet. It is a way of adl, a way of justice, a way of moderation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا We have made you a nation that is wasat. It does not exaggerate and it does not degrade. So we do not, we are not amongst those who in the love of Sayyidina Ali karam Allah wajhul kareem go so far that we fall over like the Christians fell over in the love of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And nor do we go so far in hatred for Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Kareem that we fall over like the Jews and others fell over in the hatred of the Prophets. But love of Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Kareem is a sign of Iman. There is a whole bab, there is a whole chapter in Sahih Muslim which is entitled Babu Dalil. عَلَىٰ أَنَّ حُبَّ الْأَنْصَارِ وَعَلِيِّمْ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ The Bab, the chapter to prove that love of the Ansar, love of the Sahaba who resided in, in Medina to Munawwara and love of Sayyidina Ali karam Allah wajhul kareem is from Iman. Sayyidina Ali karam Allah wajhul kareem himself narrates رضي الله تعالى عن وَالَّذِي فَلَقَ الْحَبَّ By that being who shed apart the seed وَبَرَعَ النَّسَمَ and who created mankind إِنَّهُ لَعَهَدَ النَّبِيُّ الْأُمِّيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِلَيْهِ The Prophet صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم promised to me أَلَّا يُحِبُّنِي إِلَّا مُؤْمِنْ that nobody will believe me except nobody will love me except for a believer أَلَّا يُحِبُّنِي إِلَّا مُؤْمِنْ Nobody will truly love me except for a believer. وَلَا يُبْغِدْنِي إِلَّا munafiq. And nobody will hate me except a hypocrite. So true love of Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajhahul Kareem is a sign, is a alama 
of Iman is a sign of a true Sunni Muslim. Sayyidina Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala an mentions for this reason, as it mentioned by Imam al-Tirmidhi rahimahullah, kunna na'rifu al-munafiqina bi bughdihim aliyyan. We used to recognize who is a munafiq, who is a hypocrite, by their hatred for Sayyidina Ali karamallahu wajahu al-kareem. Sayyidina Ali karamallahu wajahu al-kareem was blessed with great wisdom and great ability to judge and to make judgment. And he mentions himself how he was blessed with this. Imam Al-Hakim rahimahullah in his Mustadrak mentions a hadith which he mentioned to be Sahih from Sayyidina Ali Karamallah Wajahul Kareem. He says that Rasulullah sent me to Yemen. And I said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, you are sending me whilst I am a young man. How will I judge between them? How will I make judgment in relation to matters for them when I do not even know what is qada? When I don't know what it, how to make judgment? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam placed his blessed hands on the chest of Sayyidina Ali karam Allah wajhul kareem. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did dua Allahum mahdi qalbah O Allah guide his heart wa thabbit lisanah and make his tongue steadfast fa walladhi falak alhabba Sayyidina Ali says by that being who shed apart the seed ma shakaktu fi qada bayna ithnain I never had doubt when making judgment between two people after this the blessed dua of Rasulullah sallallahu and the blessed hand of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi coming upon the, my chest resulted in such strong judgment that Sayyidina Ali did not have any doubt in making judgment. Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an would seek refuge with Allah from having any, any time where he would have to make a judgment without Sayyidina Ali being there. And there is a famous narration which the words of which are used within our Nahu works, within our grammar works, as an example. The Sayyidina Umar said, Lawla Aliyun Lahalaka Umar. If it was not for Ali, Umar would, would be destroyed. So Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Kareem, his judgment, his foresight was great. And examples of that are found within the wise words and teachings of Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Wajhul Kareem. And today's discussion will continue and conclude on these wisdoms that Sayyidina Ali Kar the wise words of Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Wajhul Kareem. As there are many beautiful lessons to take from them. Everyone recite salawat, inshallah, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Ibn Asakir narrates from Rabi'a bin Najid that Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajhul Kareem said, Be amongst the people like a bee is amongst the birds. The birds view the bee to be a small thing, irrelevant thing. And they even try to attack it. If they understood what blessings are hidden within the stomach of the bee, they would not do what they do to the bee. What did this mean? Sayyidina Ali says, Karam Allah wajahul kareem, Khalitun nas bi alsinatikum wa adsadikum. Be such amongst the people when you're mingling with the people 
Mingle with them with your tongues and your bodies, your outer self. Wazayiluhum. And be separate from them. Bi'amalikum. In relation to your actions. Wa qulubikum. And your hearts. Fa'inna lil mar'i maktasaba. For indeed, for the person is what he earned. Wa huwa yawmul qiyama ma'aman ahab. On the day of judgment, he is with who he loves. So just like a bee is not understood by the birds, you yourself be amongst the people in such a way that they don't understand the reality that is hidden within your heart. Don't apparently show your taqwa and piety and your great good deeds that you carry out in private. Let them be something that you do only for your akhirah. And let that barakah that's hidden within you Remain hidden and do not be affected by the people trying to class you to be weak or attacking you or viewing you to be low and irrelevant. Don't be affected by that. Just like the bird is not, uh, just like the bee is not affected by that. In the same way, Sayyidina Ali Karim Allah Kareem is narrated to have said Kunu bi kabool al-amali ashad ihtimaman minkum bil-amal Be vigilant more than anything in relation to acceptance of your action than the action itself These words are a key to understanding spirituality, a key to understanding tasawwuf. Sayyidina Ali Karim Allah Wajhul Kareem is known to be the leader of all the awliya. He is the master of all the awliya. All the awliya, the friends of Allah, look towards Sayyidina Ali Karim Allah Wajhul Kareem to open up the door of wilaya to them. Open up the door of being a friend of Allah to them. And this is established through these words. Because you perform your salah, you give your zakah, you give money towards the masajid, you, you teach somebody the deen, you've done the action. But the acceptance of that action, that needs to be worried about more so than just carrying out the action itself. Because what innamal actions are based upon intentions. So we should focus upon first of all our intentions. Then after we've fulfilled the action with good intentions, we then need to fear the attacks of the shaitan in relation to getting rid of the kabuliya of that action, getting rid of the acceptance of the action. How? The shaitan brings into our hearts the desire for others to see this action. The desire for others to be pleased with the action that we carried out. That destroys the qabuliyah. The shaitan puts in our heart pride that we've done this action because we were worthy of doing this action. We have great greatness within us that caused us to have this action. And therefore that is also a destruction. And that's why Sayyidina Ali Karim Allah Wajhul Kareem said, be more vigilant in relation to the acceptance of the action rather than the action itself. And he, Karam Allah Wajal Kareem, also said that no action can be accepted without taqwa, without piety. And with true, without true sincerity, it is impossible for action to be accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the purpose behind this is that when we do actions, when we do ibadat, we need to focus on why we're doing them, for whose desire we're doing them. And then we will not be affected by the outward situation. The outward situation will be the same for us. Many scholars have said, what is khulus? What is sincerity? How would we understand what is sincerity? 
Sincerity is that, that when somebody praises us for carrying out the action, that does not affect us. When somebody condemns us for carrying out the action, that does not affect us. So the condemnation and the praise both become the same for us. Then we have sincerity. But our focus is then only on the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu wa Jahul Kareem advised those who read the Quran and try to understand the Quran. He said, Ya Hamalat al Quran, O those who hold on to the Quran, I'malu bihi, act upon it. Fa inna mal alimu, man alima thumma amila bima alim. The alim is only the one who knew and then acted upon what he knows. وَوَافَقَ عِلْمُهُ عَمَلَهُ And his knowledge was agreed to by his action. And then he warned of a nation that is to come. What is true knowledge? Knowledge is not that we announce that we know so many ahadith of by heart, that we know so many rules and regulations of the deen, that we've read so many books, we've studied under thousands of scholars, that we've spent many years sat learning the deen. That is not just knowledge. Knowledge is that when we've learnt, we've acted upon it. And that knowledge is taking us towards our target with the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he warns against the nation. There will be groups of people. They will carry knowledge. They will try to learn knowledge. It will not pass their collarbones. This knowledge will only be stuck in their brains. Pronounced by their tongues. But it will not go below the collarbone. It will not have any effect upon their hearts. تُخَالِفُوا سَرِيرَتُهُمْ عَلَانِيَتَهُمْ Their hidden, their secretive life, their hidden situation will go against their outer situation. I often state that many of us have misunderstood what the sawuf is. What true spirituality is, if we understood it, we would realize that it is an important aspect for every believer and every student of knowledge to take into account. The situation of his batin. And this is not something that's new, but rather it's something that was, that's established within the Quran and Sunnah. True tasawwuf is that which gives life to acting upon these spiritual words of the, uh, of the Prophet ﷺ and his Sahaba That our inner is not against our outer. So we focus on our inner. And we have unfortunately many different people trying to hold the banner of the Sawwuf for wrongful means. And in the same way we have many people claiming to have knowledge who are bereft of spirituality and who are as, who signify what is being described here. So there will be a nation who will learn knowledge. It will not go below their collarbone. Their inner self, their inner situation will be against the outer situation. Their actions will go against the very knowledge that they learnt. حلقن. They will sit in gatherings. فَيُبَاهِ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضًا And some of them will show arrogance and pride over others. حَتَّى إِنَّ الرَّجُلْ يَغْضِبُ عَلَىٰ جَلِيسِهِ أَنْ يَجْلِسَ إِلَىٰ غَيْرِهِ Until a person will dislike that the one who sat in his gathering sit in another gathering. So he is my follower. He is my student. And therefore he should only sit here you should not go any, anywhere else. This will be their attitude. This will be their mindset. لا تسعد أعمالهم في مجالسهم تلك إلى الله. 
They will dislike that the person leave them. Their focus will be on keeping people attached to them. Their actions will not rise. In those gatherings, their actions will not rise to, uh, to the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will not be accepted. And there will not be any barakah or any blessing in learning that knowledge. So the lesson within this blessed statement of Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajahul Kareem is that knowledge is sought for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever knowledge is, is sought, whatever knowledge we attain, we act upon that knowledge and we focus on how much we are acting upon what we are learning. And that we're not just paying lip service to the deen by discussing the deen, by reading about the deen. It's not to say that don't learn knowledge. And it's not negating the importance of knowledge. And it's not just saying like those juhala, those ignorant people say, that we don't need to learn the outer knowledge. Our inner hearts are blessed with great knowledge automatically. And yet their sujood are such that they cannot perform sajda in the correct way. They cannot recite the Quran in the correct manner. And yet they have, they have been enlightened with knowledge. If they had been enlightened that knowledge in their hearts truthfully, then their ibadat would show that. Their basic understanding of ibadat would be correct. Unfortunately, those people whose urs will be celebrating tomorrow, many of them today, when you look at their situation of their ibadah, their situation of performing their salah, their understanding of the ahkam of the deen, and they do not have that understanding, then it very much upsets you that tomorrow they will claim that they had ilmul ladunni, that they were blessed with knowledge automatically. So these Sahaba alayhim ajma'een, they were the greatest of this ummah. Not a single wali after them can be even equivalent to the dust on their feet. Yet they learned knowledge. And they held on to knowledge. And they taught people to hold on to knowledge. And therefore the zahid and the batin can only be fulfilled if both are considered. If the outer and the inner are both taken care of. But the inner is the most important. The Quran says, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam in his dua mentioned in relation to the day of judgment. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ That day when neither wealth nor children will be of any benefit. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ What will be of benefit? The one who came in the court of Allah with a sound heart. So I'm not rejecting ilmul ladunni. وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمًا The Quran says that we gave to Khadir alayhi salam knowledge from us. That knowledge does descend upon the hearts of the awliya, of the true friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what I am negating is the false claimants of today who try to move people away from learning knowledge by saying that you, that you should not have any contact with ulama. You should not have any contact with ilm. You will just have your, your heart will automatically become enlightened without sitting at the feet of the ulama. This is ignorance. And then on the other hand, you have the other ignorance, which is people learning the outward knowledge continuously, but forgetting the whole purpose behind it. Forgetting the spiritual benefit behind it. And when they come out after learning knowledge, they become like wild animals almost, predators almost in our communities who do not have any softness within their hearts. They do not have any fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts. And therefore they become a source of fitna. And unfortunately, we see the manifestation of this because amongst the signs of the Day of Judgment is that knowledge will be taken away. Today what we class to be ilm, what we class to be an alim, what we class to be a scholar, and what is truly a scholar is something completely different. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not take away knowledge by taking away from the hearts of the ulama. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take away knowledge by taking away the ulama. Until there will not be any ulama left, the people will take jahil people as their leaders. They'll take ignorant people as their leaders and they will ask them questions and they will give rulings without knowledge. 
they'll be misguided and they'll misguide others. And one of the main reasons for this is that the claimants to knowledge claim to have knowledge immediately. And they forget the fruitfulness, the true fruit of learning knowledge, which is innama yakhshallaha min ibadihi ulama The fear of Allah is only in those servants of Allah who are scholars. And the narration mentioned within many different works of hadith, including in At-Tirmidhi, and Imam Jalaluddin Suyuti rahimahullah negated those who said this hadith is mawdu. And he said rather this hadith is hasan. But there have been many different discussions in relation to this hadith. But many great ulama quote this hadith within their works. Ana madinatul ilm wa Ali babuha. I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its door. And Sayyidina Ali karamallahu wajhul kareem is teaching that if you have knowledge, then along with that amal is important. And therefore our institutes which teach knowledge have to understand this as well. It's not just good enough that we have a ceremony every once in a while and announce how much our children are learning and their beautiful recitations, their beautiful articulations are, are portrayed before their parents and before the communities and we think we've done a great job. If our children who are learning within our institutes do not change the way that they behave, the way that they carry out their daily lives by what they're learning, then we are not fulfilling knowledge. Knowledge is combined with Amal. And it's, it's something that comes with Amal. If there's no Amal, there's no knowledge. If there's no action, there's no knowledge. And therefore it's important for us to provide that discipline and that atmosphere in which where people learn, they also act upon what they learn. And the biggest environment in which a person can learn, especially from the early days, is within the house. And this is where many of us fall over. Our parents are happy to tell their children to do things. And they forget to do those things themselves. Just the simplest things that you will do will be a way of changing your children. You know, they say actions speak louder than words. So if you are somebody who continuously recites Bismillah, it will automatically reflect in your children. If you are somebody who every time you sneeze, you say Alhamdulillah, this will be reflected in the actions of your children. If you perform Salah, this is something that your children will automatically do. Because that will be the atmosphere in which they grow. So knowledge is not just information. The knowledge of the deen is not information. And the source of the knowledge of the deen is not the head, but rather it's the heart. And that's why our dua is, Rabbish rahli sadri. Oh Allah, open up my heart, open up my chest, so that I can take this knowledge. This ilm is nur, and it enters the heart. But the heart is not detached from the outer. And that's why it's mentioned in the commentaries of the fiqh works, so the marakil falah, that a person was performing salah, and playing with his clothes. And Rasulullah said to him, if your heart was fearful, then your outer body would also be fearful. What's in your heart? What's in the ball will come out of it. What's in a utensil will come out of it. If there is water here, then it is clearly visibly water. It's, it's, it's clear. If I was to spill this out, you would see water coming out. If this was coloured, if this was a different drink, the colour of that drink would be apparent. If this was mud, when we're throwing it out, it would be apparent. So you can't just say, my heart is fearful. Right? So like the, these Jahil Sufis say, I don't want to mention them too much, otherwise I'll get so passionate that I'll, I'll, I'll lose my uh, course and get off the topic. But this is what these people say as well. My heart has knowledge. I didn't need to go to a madrasa. I didn't need to go to any alim. I have knowledge in the heart. So Hazrat, how much faraid are there of salah? How much wajibat are there of salah? Right? And the murid asks that I uh, forgot such, a, such, such and such an act, action in salah. What is the ruling? And poor old Hazrat Sahib, whose heart is enlightened, cannot answer this question. And nor can he pick up a book. Because he says, I don't get my knowledge from books. So where will he look? 
So this is where the false claimants are taking people, unfortunately. But the outer will show and reflect what is in the inner. When we just look at our daily lives, if I'm happy, my face will show that I'm happy. If I'm angry, there'll be signs on my face that I'm angry. In the same way, when there is the contentment that the zikr of Allah brings in the heart, then that will be apparent on the face. And if there's hypocrisy hidden in the heart, that will become apparent on the face. And that's why Sayyidina Ali is teaching us that if you learn knowledge, learn it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and never detach knowledge from amal. Never detach knowledge from action. And if you want to know how much a person knows, don't just look at the information he has. Look at his actions. Look at his character. Look, look at his way of life. If, it, if there's no amal there, then it's not worthy. That person is not worthy of, take, of being somebody who you can take knowledge from. You know, now we pick up any, we take knowledge from anywhere. But this was not the way of our Akabid. They would think a long time before they took knowledge from someone. And Imam Zurnuji has written a whole book, Ta'alim al Muta'allim, Tariqat Ta'allum. Teaching the student how to, le- how to learn knowledge. In this book, he mentions that when, to- when choosing an ustad, when choosing somebody who you take knowledge from, you need to take time. Look at the way the person is. Maybe sp- even spend two months with the person to see how that person is before you decide. A manifestation of this was Imam Malik rahimahullah. When asked why did he take Abu Ayyub al-Sukhtiyani rahimahullah, as one of his teachers, he says, I saw him in Hajj. And I saw that whenever Rasulullah sallallahu was mentioned, he would cry so much. Out of love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi he'd cry so much that we would feel pity for him like you'd feel pity for a child. And when I saw this, that every time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi is mentioned, his heart shakes and he's, he's crying I chose him to be my ustad I chose him to be my teacher when I saw this great love that he had radiallahu ta'ala an for Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so this is what we need to look in our asatiza in our the, the teachers who look, af- who look after and care for our students of the deen and children it's not just oh he taught thousands of people right 50,000 people became a hafiz in that Darul Uloom or so many thousands became alim in that Darul Uloom. So we're happy to send our child there. There's so much knowledge there. But if it's bereft of the love of Allah and His Rasul وسلم, and of the Sahaba and Ahlul Bayt, then it is not Darul Uloom. Then it is Darul Zulma. Right? It's, it's, a dar, it's, a, it's of darkness. It's not Uloom. It's not light. So what, what we look for in knowledge is that amal, is a manifestation. It's no good if our child learns somewhere and then he does not know how to mention the name of his akabid. Does not know how to commemorate and respect the lives of the elders. Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajhul Kareem also is mentioned from his blessed statements that at tawfiqu khayru qaid, the best leader that you can have in your life is ability from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَحُسْنُ الْخَلَقِ خَيْرُ قَرِينَ And the best that you can have in life is good character. وَالْعَقْلُ خَيْرُ صَاحِبِ And intellect is the best companion. وَالْعَدَبُ خَيْرُ مِرَاثِ And having respect is the greatest inheritance. And that goes back to what we just mentioned. If our children are not taught adab, and if we don't have adab, then we have, we, we have no goodness within us. The best inheritance to have is adab. And this word is very key. Well, adabu khayru mirath. We will take this adab from our teacher, we'll take it from his teacher, from his teacher. And that's why we need to consider who we take as our teacher. Wala wahsha ashad min al ujub. And there is no danger and no plague 
that's more severe than loving yourself. Than having self-pride and thinking that you have something great within you. And amongst the statements of Sayyidina Ali Karamallah wa Jahul Kareem that I mentioned is that a man came to Sayyidina Ali to ask about destiny. So a man came to ask about destiny. And as many of us will know, that discussing destiny is something that if you go far in discussion of destiny, your iman becomes in danger. Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught the Sahaba may not to delve into destiny too much. But then Ali Karim Allah wajahul kareem summarized it in the most beautiful manner. He asked the man, he said, Ayyuha sail, inna Allah khalaqa ka lima sha'a aw lima shi'at. Did Allah create you for how he wished and for what he wished or for how you wish? Did Allah create you to live your life according to what you wish? Or did he create you according to how he wished? And the man said, Balli Masha. He created me how he wished. I did not desire, I did not decide where I'm going to be born, when I'm going to be born. Right? We cannot decide how long I will be living for. Qala fayasta'amiluka fi masha. So he will use you and he will place you in wherever he wishes. So this is a summary to destiny. That Allah created you how he wished. So he will let you live as he wishes. So you'll be happy with what he wishes. And what he has decreed. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll conclude on the judgment of Sayyidina Ali Karim Allah Wajahul Kareem. On a famous event that occurred. That shows the justice of Sayyidina Ali Karim Allah Wajahul Kareem. And how this hikmah that we're attaining from him is something that was apparent within his life and actions. And like he, radiallahu anhu, karamallahu wajal kareem taught, if you don't have action, then mere lip service and mere knowledge is not good enough. And how far was this action? It was shown in this and then how beautifully this was a way of propagating the deen. Qadi Shuraih a great judge, radiallahu an mentions. They say that Ali Karamallah wajahul kareem went to a battle and he lost one of his armors. He could not find one of his armors. When he came back to Kufa, he found this armor with a Jewish man. Say that Ali Karamallah wajahul kareem said to the Jewish man, this Quote, this armor is mine. I did not sell it. And nor did I gift it to anyone. The Yehudi said, the Jewish man said, this coat of armor is rather mine. And it's in my hand. So Sayyidina Ali Karim Allah Wajal Kareem said, we'll take this matter to the judge. To Qadi Shuray. And at this time, Sayyidina Ali Karim Allah Wajal Kareem is the Amir al-Mu'mineen. He's the Khalifa of the Muslims. So Shuraih, Qadi Shuraih said, Qul ya Amir al Mu'mineen, or leader of the believers, say what, what is the matter? Sayyidina Ali, Ali Karam Allah Kareem said, This armor that is in the hands of this Jewish man, this is my armor. I did not sell it, I did not gift it to anyone. Qadi Shuraih said, Aish taqul ya Yahudi, what do you say, O Yahudi? قَالَ دِرْعِي وَفِي يَدِي He said, it's my armor and it's in my hand. I'm not prepared to accept that this is the armor of Sayyidina Ali, Karam Allah wa Kareem. So Qadi should have said to Sayyidina Ali, because Sayyidina Ali is bringing the case. So الْبَيِّنَةُ عَلَى الْمُدَّعِي وَالْيَمِينَ عَلَى مَنْ أَنْكَرْ The one who brings the case, he has to bring proof. The one who is making a claim has to bring proof. The one against whom the claim is made, he doesn't have to bring proof for his rejection. He just has to do qasam, he just has to do yameen. He just has to reject. So Qadi Shuraih said to Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Wajahul Kareem, Do you have any proof for what you are saying? Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Wajahul Kareem said, Yes, my slave and Sayyidina Hassan, my son Hassan, they both will testify. 
that this shirt is my shirt. Qadi Shurayh said, the testimony of a son is not permissible for his father. So although Sayyidina Hassan radiallahu anh, cannot lie, but his witness statement is not enough for his father. Right? In order to establish justice, we cannot say that a son can testify for his father. Sayyidina Ali Karim Allah wa Karim said, Dajulu min ahlil jannah, la tajuzu shahadatu. A man from the people of Jannah and his shahada is not accepted. Sami'atu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqool. I heard the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Al Hassan wa Al Hussein, Sayyida Shababi Ahlil Jannah. Hassan and Hussein are the masters of the youth of Jannah. The youth of, the, the, the youth of Jannah, the masters of them are Al Hassan wa Al Hussein. So this Jannati, Hassan, and you're not accepting his testimony. But Qadi Shurayh said, this is the rule of the land, this is the rule of the Sharia, uh, the way the courts will, will deal with things, the way the judge deals with things. And that is that if, if it's a son, he cannot testify for his father. And Sayyidina Ali Karim Allah Kareem was prepared to accept this judgment. This is the judgment of the Qadi. And therefore, I'm not rejecting it. And this is the Amir al Mu'mineen, not rejecting it. Today, what do we have? In our own. At our level, you know, not in terms of governmental level, in our own ways, what do we do? Within the Madaris even. Right? Just yesterday, it was a bit of a humorous uh, request from one of the students. What, what's coming up in the exam? Right? You're quite close to me. So which ayah, which ayah will you be asking the tafsir of in the exam? And this is not, you know, this cannot occur. Right? We cannot give you the, the answer for that. Right? So when you have a system and you have a rule, that rule has to be acted upon for all. We cannot change it for those who are proximate to us, who are close to us. Right? So the fees for everybody else is such and such, but we'll, we'll give it to you at such and such. Right? We'll lower it for so and so. Or we, we will give special treatment, preferential treatment to somebody else. But this was not something that was... A, that was appropriate or something that was agreed by our leaders so as Amir al-Mu'mineen he did not use his powers to say the judge will only decide what I decide but rather the judge has independent judgment and I will accept what he's judging what, what his judgment is when the Yahudi saw this he says Amir al-Mu'mineen qaddamani ila qadihi first of all the leader of the believers took me to his judge. He could have called everybody and made an announcement, that I'm the leader of the believers, this Yahudi, this Jew is in my, this Jewish man is amongst my riaya, amongst the people in my, under my governance, and he has my uh, armor, I'm the leader of the believers, I'll use my power to take it. But he did not do that, rather he took me to his qadi. Wa qadihi And his, and his judge, made judgment against him. So the judge is, is neutral and is making judgment against him. He said, Ashhadu anna hadha huwa al-haqq. I testify that this is the truth. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah wa anna dir'a dir'uk. He said, I testify that none is worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger of Allah and that this armor is your armor. So after the judgment had been made, he accepted that this armor is your armor. But I've seen the way that your judgment is carried out with justice. And that you accept this judgment even though you know in your heart that this armor is yours. But when you see that this is the way that judgments will be applied, you are accepting that. So these were not just words. And that's why the words of those who act upon their words have power within them. Because they're not just speaking, but rather their hearts are inviting us towards their way. And from those blessed personalities and from the greatest of those personalities, whose words of wisdom, whose way of life is a great way for us to follow, is Sayyidina Ali Karim Allah wa ta'ala Kareem. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant, grant us his blessings. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me if I made any error in this discussion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unites us with the Sahaba and the Ahlul Bayt in Jannatul Firdaus. 
آمن بجاه النبي الكريم أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات